Welcome to week six of Dwell, our final week of learning how to abide or dwell with God in prayer with all that we are from the soul. The scriptures talk about the soul being the life. It's who we are. And so we've been praying about and through the different parts of our soul, our body, our thinking, our emotions, our relationships. And now in this final week, looking at the heart or biblical language also uh, talks about this as being our will or our spirit. But whatever language we put on the heart, the heart is the center and the core of who we are. And what typifies the heart is desire. It's where we purpose things. It's where we will things. It's the control center of our lives. It's been said by many that we do what we desire. The choices that we make and the lives that we live come from the heart. They come from desire. And the good news is that in Christ we have new desire or a new heart. Being made in the image of God means that we are made for a relationship with God. And the deepest, most central reality of who we are is that we desire Him. And in Christ, that desire, that deepest, most true part of who we are is opened up. To put it in biblical language, our hearts were dead and now they are alive. Now, part of the challenge is that we also have old desires mixed in. And part of abiding with God in prayer is that we begin to learn how to recognize and live out of the deepest, truest sense of desire we have, which is our desire for God. One of my favorite statements related to this is from a writer and theologian named Alan Jones from his book, Soul Making. And he says this, I love it. He says, a human being is a longing for God. Not that a human being has a longing for God, which is true, but that what most describes us is that we are a longing for God. We long for Him. We desire Him. It makes me think of the first two verses of Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. You see, the shape and the architecture of our hearts is that we desire to live in union with the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as we look at the heart this week in our prayer, we're seeking to abide with Him there. And what we're going to be looking at is this issue of desire. When Jesus walked this earth, one of the most common questions he would ask people is, what do you desire? What do you want? And he didn't ask this question because he didn't know the answer. In fact, he always knew the answer, but he asked this question because he wanted people to interact with him at the heart level. He wanted a relationship with people that was at the place of desire and their will. Proverbs 4, verse 23, tells us that from our hearts flow the springs of life. And the encouragement there is to keep or to guard our heart. Now, when we talk about this issue of desire, for some of us, that uh, can perhaps seem a little scary. We don't want to deal with desire. We, We have desires that perhaps even scare us. And so we might be likely to want to suppress desire. But one of the things that makes Christianity unique among all the other faith systems of the world is that we are encouraged to live out of desire, not to suppress it. And so here's the other reality. Those desires that seem so strong, those desires that you'd rather not have, they're not as strong as your desire for Christ. In fact, when we start to learn how to dwell with God, in that place of desire, and that desire for Him begins to be unleashed, 
all the other desires in life begin to pale in comparison. So what we're going to be doing this week in this prayer for the heart is we are going to be learning to keep the heart as Proverbs 4 encourages us to keep the heart, to notice the desires of our heart, to notice those lesser desires and to hold them before God and without judgment to entrust them to Him. To notice with some of our desires, what is the deeper, truer desire underneath those lesser desires? And to keep the heart means to notice that desire that we have for God and then begin to live out of that, to delight in Him. Psalm 37 encourages us to delight ourselves in the Lord and to delight is heart language. And as we delight in Him and we begin to let our desire for Him be stirred, the encouragement is that then our hearts are shaped with that desire. And that's what we're going to seek to do in this time of prayer this week. And so again, Psalm 42, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. 